We're going to be looking at displacement time graphs, so looking at what a graph looks like with your displacement changing over a period of time. So if we're doing a graph, the first thing we need is a set of axes. So I'm going to draw my axes up here. Here's my y-axis coming down and my x-axis going across. Now it can be confusing which quantity goes on which axis. So my rule of thumb is you always put time on the x-axis. Time keeps going along, so time is going to go on our x-axis. Remember, every quantity needs to have a unit. So our units for time are going to be in seconds. That means that our displacement is going to go on our y-axis. So our displacement, the symbol is s, and the units, again, every quantity must have a unit, our units are going to be in meters. Now we've got our axes, we can start thinking about what our graph's going to look like. So I'm going to plot a graph of me going to the shops, I go to the shops, uh, I stop there for a while, and then I come back home. So, I'm going to start at home with my ze at zero time and zero displacement. Then, as I go to the shops, I'm going to be walking at a steady speed to the shops. So my displacement is increasing as time is going along. Once I get to the shops, I stop and I look around the shops, pick up a few things. So time is still going, but my displacement from my house isn't increasing. So here you can see as we go along, the displacement is the same, but the time is increasing. Then I realize I'm running late and I need to get home again. So I very quickly go back down, down on my graph, back home. So my, this time my displacement is going down back to where I started. This is the key difference between displacement and distance. Now we've got our graph, we can look at the different sections of the graph. So this is the story of me going to the shops, staying at the shops and coming home. So if we look at this section here, this is me going at a steady velocity. So I'm doing the same speed here all the time. You can tell that because it's a nice straight line. If it was a curvy line, then I'd be doing different velocities at different points. We talked about this, but here, this is where my displacement isn't changing, but time is still going along. So this is where I am stationary. And finally, this one here, again, we've got a nice straight line. So this too is going to be a steady velocity. But this time, because I'm going negative in my displacement, my velocity is also going to be negative. Now, let's think and look at our graph for a minute. We remember, we talked about velocity here. We can remember from our equations that our velocity is equal to our displacement divided by time. So this is, gives us our average velocity. The total displacement divided by the total amount of time. Now looking at this, we can use this equation to work out our velocities at these points. Let's say that it's 200 meters to the shop, so my displacement here is 200 meters, and that's taken me 40 seconds. I can use this equation and this graph to work out what my velocity is in this section here. We do that by calculating the gradient. We know that our gradient is equal to our change in our y-axis divided by our change in our x-axis. So if we drop this down here, this is going to be our change in y. And this across here is going to be our change in x. So we can take some readings and put them into our calculation. So our change in y, we've gone from 0 to 200. So this is 200 meters. And our change in x, 40 seconds. So here we've taken our gradient and we've got something that looks very much like this. We can then work this out to say that I must have been going at 5 meters per second. This can also be written as 5 meters seconds to the minus 1. We could do the same to work out our gradient here and thus get our velocity here, but clearly our displacement here is going to be negative 200. Again, here we could do the same thing, but here our change in our displacement is zero. So this section here would be zero, giving us a total gradient, total velocity of zero meters per second, which ties up exactly with our idea that this area should be where we're stationary.